All right, hello, this is Mr. Saguero, and um, today, or this time, I would like to uh, give you the basics of this camera. This camera is the Sony uh, A6000. How to turn a camera on, right? Or perhaps how the, the battery content, where the battery is, and the SD card. Pull this battery is in it this little blue uh, leveler you press it against the body of the camera to the right and the battery ejects okay that's you see the little contacts okay goes on the on the left of the camera i'm gonna just pop this in and I press it hard and the camera is still is preloaded uh, it should hold the battery in place. Memory card. Memory card, as you can see, okay, the metal parts goes to the right side of the camera. I'm gonna just carefully align it very properly here, okay? Press, and as well is spring-loaded, so the camera should actually hold the uh, SD card itself. Close, to the right is locked. All right, now we have battery and SD card right in place. Let's turn the camera around and lenses. We can have a few lenses into this camera, which we have a few uh, in class, okay? This one is this one is a 18 and 235 millimeter. So it's quite a nice, decent uh, range. So right on the lens, we have a switch. This switch right here is the focus, manual, or auto, okay? Manual focus, and this outer ring is the focus ring. We switch this to auto, and obviously it's going to be automatically. And this camera lens is an E mount, so let's say I'm looking for a new lens. I need to make sure that I look for an E mount lens. So let's turn this camera around. This guy right here, the little button there, this one, you press it. Okay, and you twist the lens to the left and it comes off. Done. Okay, so how is it that I will put the lens in it? Oh, by the way, we don't leave any cameras, okay, uh, with no lens cap or any lens itself. Not just like that. It's not a good thing. It's not healthy for the camera itself. So, the lens has a little white dot, and the camera has a little, oh, come on. And the camera has a white dot right there on the right here as well. So, what I have to do is, I need to make sure that I line these two, and I twist the lens to the right. Now I have the lens loaded. Power on the camera. On. We're gonna put it on, uh, on the, open the lens. The lens is a 18, 235 as I mentioned. Out of focus, manual focus. Our pr will prefer M, F, manual, focus, okay? Now, let's open this right here. We have a microphone input, and then this one in the middle is the micro HDMI output. If I want to just have video out uh, from the camera to any other destination, perhaps a video projection, a video switcher, or whatever it is that you actually want that video. So, and then we closed uh, 
that is the little door and we're done. Okay, as you can see, this lens has a lens cap. So we wanna go and press these two here, open the lens, and now we have an image. Look at that. So, to take a picture, and, and if you want all the camera help, okay? So, the best thing to do is put the camera in auto and align it with this dot, okay? Uh, I want to take a picture. This right here, this is the shooter. The shooter is here. All right, so now if I press, I was saying if I soft press this, you hear that? Okay, so I'm going to focus into this keyboard here. So the soft press is to make sure that we focus the image, okay? Soft, and then press hard and it will take the picture. Let's preview the pictures, shall we? This button right here is with that playback icon and that's one picture. This wheel, this wheel in here actually is to um, preview the image and I just turn it, all right? So I can just go and that's the picture that I took from the keyboard and this is the picture that I was pointing to the ceiling. I go back to my camera mode, I hit this once again. So, uh, <clears throat> as you can see, this camera don't, don't come with a flash, which it should be put right here, an external flash, if we wanna take pictures during dark. This camera is the Alpha 6400, okay? Great camera, records up to 4K and video or obviously 1080 progressive. So let's meet this dial in here, okay? Auto, obviously, it will actually set the camera in auto mode, everything from white balance to audio sets, exposure, ISO, and the shutter speed as well, okay? So that is, that is the auto mode. If I go P, which means uh, preset, okay, you can actually select between a few presets on the camera itself. And as now, as you can see, we have more stuff in the screen, okay? If I go with details, okay, on each, it could take a little while, but I'm gonna tell you a few. This one right here, okay, is 3,234. That is how many pictures can actually fit uh, onto the SD card. 85% on the battery, okay? Um, this autofocus mark, this is the focus area that actually you set the camera to concentrate to, etc. okay? Uh, now, if I, I just going to close this, shutter speed, exposure, ISO is, is, is automatic. Okay, um, let's open this. And I'm going to close. You see how actually, beep, and it's giving me an auto number. So now, the shutter speed once is one uh, sixty over uh, a one sixty of a second. The exposure is f five point six. That's how much light they're gonna be going into. Um, and then we have out ISO is auto.
I'm going to take another picture here. Okay, I took a picture. And it's there. So, uh, let's go into um, uh, shutter speed, which is most what I will just want to concentrate is, okay, um, shutter speed is this one here. This one is at 30 of, of a second. With this wheel here, okay, I want, I'm going to turn it. Look at that. And it's getting darker and darker. This speed right here would be a considerable good speed to take pictures uh, of fast moving objects. For example, flying birds, a butterfly, um, cars going by to a certain, uh, you know, a speed, a sport, any type of sport, obviously, basketball, football, whatever, and you just want to freeze that player running with the ball or just throwing uh, to dunk the, the ball into a basket. So this number will be a, a good number to start or higher if possible, okay? But keep in mind, this is something very important to just keep in mind, higher this number, higher that, that shutter number, okay? Higher this number, the more light that you're going to need. So, um, in that case, I will go into exposure, okay? And I'm going to crank this up as much as I really need. I go to my, uh, whoops, I should have left touch to here. Enter. The center button here is enter. I'm gonna change my, and I'm gonna go to, and by the way, this is 4,000. That is not really that much. So, in auto, let's see if I wanna take a picture, you know, fast and a good speed. I will start with, uh, let's say 60 to 100, okay? But we need to have fast moving objects, okay? So, I'm gonna try to, and let's see how my, my hand moving, oops. As you can see, my hand moving is so blurry. Okay, I'm gonna change the, to let's say 800. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, now I'm gonna give it a sec. As you can see, my hand is just, is just Less blurry, but it's out of focus, obviously. So I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna go uh, 1250. I'm gonna go onto the exposure. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, so as you can see now, okay, that is my hand totally frozen. Okay, but it's still out of focus because I have it too close, I have it too close to the lens. So, let's go back. Um, the speed of the shutter. How fast do you want to just close? This one is going super fast. Let's add some enhancing from the camera itself. We wanna put this number about, yeah, 1,600, actually, let's go 2,000, okay? This ISO, okay, I'm gonna press it, and you're gonna see this number right here. Right now, it's in auto, so I'm going to crank this up. Obviously, right now, it's dark. And look at that. 20,000, 32,000. Okay, I want to clarify that if you crank this much, obviously the detail of the picture is gone and it's gonna be an overexposure and or perhaps it's gonna be grainy. I will go into, uh, okay, my exposure here. 
and I will go to let's say 4 enter ISO and I'm bringing this up okay ISO is 200 and I want to go back okay uh, that is a lot 40,000 too much but I need a lot of light so enter I'm gonna back to my exposure again I'm gonna crank this up to at least uh, two enter and let's see there we go so I have and I see that it's better than before but as you can see all the data here of how you know the settings of the, the camera itself how it was taken it was the ISO was very high the shutter speed is 2000 over uh, a 2000 of a second and is fast so exposure let's go back to camera let me put the lens so I can okay so we have it on shutter uh, priority this is a aperture priority okay means this one here okay is priority of exposure composition okay and here you can still manipulate the ISO and all that kind of stuff okay enter or here you can go and manipulate this is the exposure as well composition this will change it remember now we are into uh, aperture composition and this is shutter and M is manual for everything that is when you actually tell you will tell the camera what to do from focus to exposure ISO uh, shutter speed etc you are the boss okay so um, I do believe uh, I got most of what you need from this camera okay uh, I want to go back into uh, if I want to take a picture auto auto period soft and the lens cap is, is on so no beeps okay I want to just mention this is the last thing you see this button right here this is the record button this is the video button movie I will press this again and now it's recording as you can see it has the audio as well bars and is right on the screen okay I'm going to press one more time and it's stop okay I hope I answer your concerns about this camera and uh, okay I hope uh, I hope you got a lot but anyways any questions you can have I um, I am here I am want to tell you that I don't know everything but I am trying to get myself um, knowledgeable so I actually can pass that up to you and demoing what I know to you so thank you for watching
today we're going <laughs> to Today we're going to talk about frequencies. This is a high pitch frequency. Here we go. Oh, I, love, I love it. I love it. Here we go. So, high frequencies and very low. Hum, from which to where is this the, the frequencies that our ears can capture? From what number? That was, I said that a few days ago. From 20 hertz I'm sorry, 20,000 hertz. And the hertz is like a circle. That's what actually that the speed how that is an example of how the the audio frequency is created. And when it changes the tone, and it's uh, the the um, the pitch increases. So. Mid-range, trumpets, clarinets, and French horns, alto and tenors, vocalist. A human speaking voice dies, most likely my tone is going to be probably in the mid-range. Because I already did my example, oh, this is low. All right, today we're going to talk about the chipmunks. No, oh my God, do you see how it sounds very fun? So, and then I went to the, all the way high. High frequency sounds like flutes, piccolo, soprano, vocalist, and so forth. And even crazy chipmunks. Oh, any um, Looney Tunes. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> hey, thank you, Julian. All right, anybody still taking notes here? You got it? Oh, good. Sound frequency, continuation. Factors into choosing microphones and recording uh, music. We need to, like I said in the beginning, very important that we need to pick up the right microphone for the respective frequencies. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to stop right here and to say it in Spanish. Las frecuencias hay bajas y altas. Ya nos escuchaste hacer el ridículo, ¿verdad? Como sonar como sapo, boop, 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 boop. Y el chipman acá, que lo hizo muy bien. Okay. Esa es la, la frecuencia baja o la frecuencia alta. Eh, y los ejemplos es como la guitarra del bajo, el, 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 ba, el, el bombón, que se le llama al, en el drum set, y la tuba. ¿Anybody in here, here knows how to play that thing? No. No, the... That's a big thing right here. That was heavy, I guess. Y luego tenemos las frecuencias en mediano, que son las trompetas, clarinetes, y los horns, que son las trompetas francesas. Ah, los tenores que cantan también. A mí no me gusta la música de esa canción. Así como cantan tenores, no, no sé, no me gusta. La, la voz humana normalmente está en, el, en el, lo que es la, el alcance. El rango mediano, ¿ok? Uh, no sonamos como sapos, ¿verdad? Ni tampoco sonamos como los lunitones. Simplemente es normal. La frecuencia alta la tenemos en lo que es las flautas, los pícolos y los sopranos. No. Yo creo que se me trabarían la, las cuerdas vocales si trato yo de hacer un sonido del soprano ahorita. Mejor la dejamos ahí. ¿Ok? All right. Algo muy importante era de que siempre vamos a elegir el micrófono adecuado y eso va a ser cómo las frecuencias van a, a resultar. Okay. Sabemos el micrófono que se va a usar. Okay. Uh, y esto es lo que yo, la verdad, quería mostrarles muy importante. This is something that I really wanted to show you all. This is a microphone, uh, the physical form of a mic. Okay. Uh, the wire. This is the wire here, obviously. I already showed you that XLR cable. Uh, this is a magnetic um, field right here that creates, that is the one that creates all 
the, that field into electrical pulses and they will go to the wire to the soundboard. Um, this is the element that vibrates, that it actually creates, practically is the one that creates a frequency, okay? Uh, and a sound pickup is going right here and right here. So this is the diaphragm right here that makes the audio, the, the, the proper audio frequency itself. The diaphragm that vibrates, vibrates a coil, which is this one here, this one right here, uh, does this. So whenever that we are using a microphone, we need to be very careful with the mic not to drop it because we could just damage this part right here, okay? So, uh, wiring wireless mics, both have the advantage and disadvantages, okay? I like wire mics, especially if I'm doing a concert, I want to have a wire mic, okay? Especially that if a concert, okay, and First of all, I don't want a fail in a wireless mic, okay? Convenience because the singer is going places with the mic. Like right here with me, I can just go with this microphone all over the place and my voice is still going to be picked up by the receiver on the camera, okay? But it's as use it, you know, using it right here as a, um, you know, a consumer situation, okay, a uh, school perhaps, I don't risk much. If it loses it, okay, gone, audio gone. I figured it out, I will find it when I hit the stop and take the video to my timeline and say, wait a minute, the microphone went offline from this point forward. Uh, and metaphorically, I'm gonna be dead because my, uh, my video won't, it won't be good at all. So, Quality of mics are related to cost. So if I want a wireless microphone and I want the quality of sound, frequency-wise, it's gonna cost me money. So when you hear music from the uh, famous uh, singers, give me one name. Uh, famous, uh, fam a fam famous one that you actually use music. Uh, Tyler. Huh? Tyler, Tyler the Creator. Okay. So whenever he goes to a concert, he presents a concert, and his microphone needs to be just precisely perfect. Not a risk. So that microphone, it might cost between three, five, or seven thousand dollars, because it needs to fulfill some very critical requirements. We, we don't need a margin of failing uh, in a concert. So wire for me. Wireless for so many. The wireless is slightly less expensive than the wireless, obviously, because of the convenience, the wireless, you can fly everywhere with it. Cables run up to 200 feet with no loss of signal. So we can have a cable, an XLR, okay, all through this hallway, all the way to the end, it's 200 feet, the audio will be precisely as I'm really expecting from the mic. Uh, longer runs may need amplifier to keep signal, okay? Over the 200 and so feet, we're gonna need something in between to preamp that, that audio mic. Very important. Uh, remember, the gaffer does this. Tape, tape cables down to the floor to avoid tripping hazards, okay? Very important. Uh, coils and storage, coil and storage all cables after use, okay? This is a cable coil right here. When I was, when I was um, part of my training on television, when I start, the cables, I needed to do, I needed to coil those cables on the floor, okay? <clears throat> and those, those cables were not short anyways, okay? Let me, let me show you one uh, way Oh, Lordy. Okay. What happened here? Okay. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, my gosh. This is not what I was expecting. Nope. 
one and entangle my cable so bad. There we go. So I have this cable right here. How many wires this cable actually has in its jacket? Can someone, someone guess? Three. Three. Very good. And the reason is because we three pins, right? So three wires in here. So the way that I actually learned, or they taught me, was to do it in number eight figure. Okay, and so I needed to do this, and here, and here, that is one way that they actually taught me how to do it, okay, but let me tell you, and then we grab it from the middle, boom, it will be properly coiled, not the mess that I have. This one's is not, this one's, this type right here is not necessary to do that. You're just going to do this right here, softly. Don't type because this is not a rope. This is not a cowboy thing, okay? No, just softly, just go and turn it, okay, here. And I'm going to explain you why is it that this one is not a need, okay? Just have it right. Here we go. Reason why they taught me on the number eight figure is because the cables that we actually were we, we were coiling, they had 16 little wires inside the jacket. So the cable was this thick. It called coax cables. Okay? So but it has 16 little baby cables in it. And if we will do this, or we just crimple, or we just tangle that up in the wrong way, we were risking for those little baby wires just to break. And those cables back in the day were so expensive. So we needed to just follow that direction here in the number eight to make sure that those, those wires uh, uh, inside the jacket were properly you know, coiled in the same direction. So as this one right here, not a need. You know, of course, we need to do it very gentle. There's only three wires in it, in the jacket. Questions? We're good? All right, I think we're gonna stop right here, and we're gonna actually uh, get ready for lunch.